Hitangata, hitangata, hitangata. What is the most important thing? It is people, it is people, it is people. My name is Alexia. I'm 19 years old. Yes, yeah, so I was invited to be part of the NASA Sophia 2017 Southern Deployment. I went to Buckingham Palace and then I got to meet the Queen. I'm her um, staff member. She's the boss. <laughs> I am the founder of an organisation called Girl Boss New Zealand and I'm uh, part Samoan, part Greek and part New Zealand European. And this is my mum. Um, used to have my own identity but now <laughs> Alexia's mum. Our Samoan family are the Westbrooks. John Walter Westbrook, who is my grandfather and Alexia's great-grandfather. So here he is in Samoa when he was young and then when he was 17, he came to New Zealand in 1940 during the World War because they needed workers and staff and he trained as a printer. And he worked for 40 odd years at suburban newspapers yes. in Mount Ross School. The godfather of suburban newspapers, according yeah. to this article. And it says the Green Bay man who came to New Zealand oh. from Western Samoa in 1942 without ever seeing a telephone, learnt to use one pretty quickly while checking in with his aunt, with whom he stayed with on his arrival. He arrived in New Zealand on a Thursday and started work the following Monday at the Auckland Star. I wish that I'd got to speak to him, but I was too young to realise the importance of um, what it was like to migrate here to New Zealand at 17 years of age. You know, I wish I'd spoken to him more about that. and. Um, I'm really proud of his work ethic and we have that fighting spirit and mum was a hard worker and, and was wanted just to work for her family and to do the best for her family. Having that strong female role models in my life and seeing them both overcome adversity, uh, I mean my nana left school at 13, I had a, it was a, a teen mum, various types of cancer um, over a very long period of time. Mum was so excited about big massive Westbrook family reunion in Samoa, so her and dad went up but unfortunately it all went wrong so she had to come home that night which was a real devastating time. She knew she would never have good enough health to go back again. But even when she was having all of this uh, different types of cancer for years and years, still she was still getting up early at uh, five in the morning to bake for the retirement village. So that service to others, regardless of your situation, and realising that you can always create change and you can always be a light to others. We all live in Red Beach now and that we, we were drawn to Red Beach because Grandpa had a batch there and that's where he lived, you know, mm. as a retired man. Our mum moved up and then we moved up and mum's um, ashes are scattered at Red Beach because that's our special place. I was a single mum with Alexia for the first five years of her life and so um, I was on my own with her. We are together all the time and I drove her to school. She, she came to my school and all the way there and all the way home we'd just be talking, um, analysing, reflecting, creating together and so we, we get on really, really well and she's always been a child who's never asked for anything. She's not a spoiled child. She's a very good girl. Alexia Hilbertidou from New Zealand. There was 20,000 nominations and this year they selected 60 uh, young people under 30 uh, in the Commonwealth to receive this award and we flew to Buckingham Palace and we received a medal from Her Majesty the Queen. We got access to leadership and mentoring opportunities. We got to have some incredible experiences. Uh, I got to sit down with young leaders and Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The sort of importance of that 
was that, it, that recognition it provided to Girlboss New Zealand. What is Girlboss? Girlboss is a by youth, for youth, social enterprise that was started to encourage young women into STEM fields so that they can become the change makers of the future and today. So when I was uh, in high school at 16, I was the only girl in my digital technology class and then later the only girl in my advanced physics class. And I'd go to coding competitions and business and pitching competitions and see so few young women there uh, in these spaces. And I really wanted to, how do we create a movement? How do we create a community for, for ambitious young women? Uh, and how can we do something? And I remember at 16, looking at the statistics, looking at uh, the New Zealand Stock Exchange and the CEOs on there and seeing so few female CEOs. Enough about me, I've actually got a question for you guys. What percentage of the world's top CEOs are women? 25%, 17, 32%. So the answer is 4.1%. There's more top CEOs who are named John than there are CEOs who are women. Seeing these statistics at 16 miles, we really said, what can we do to, ch to change those statistics? So we've got 8,000 young women uh, in the network and we run workshops in schools, conferences uh, and online social advocacy, which encourages young women into science, technology, engineering and maths and encourages them to consider those pathways. I want New Zealand to be leading the way for gender equality. I want all young people in New Zealand to have access to opportunities, choice and power. I want young people to not feel confined to gender stereotypes. And I want New Zealand to reach full gender equality. And I think what you always remind me when I go, oh gosh, I don't want to do it anymore, is you say, well, you're not actually doing it for yourself.